Welcome back. It's great to have you with us on On Point. Now, ahead of the BRICS Summit next week, we've been exploring the economic clout of this uh, essentially political block. Let's bring up something that gives you an idea of the size of the BRICS economies at the moment. You'll see there that China's GDP or total output was 17.9 trillion US dollars last year. So that is the powerhouse of BRICS and, of course, the second largest economy in the world. India is way behind at 3.3 trillion US dollars. But remember that it is predicted that ultimately uh, China will take over the United States. And in the next three decades or so, Goldman Sachs believes that India will also surpass the United States to become the second biggest economy in the world behind China. Compared to even the smaller BRIC countries, remember they were there first, then South Africa joined, we have a tiny economy, 406 billion US dollars last year in terms of size. We're also lagging far behind when it comes to the growth rate. You can see that those are the latest growth rates. The idea, though, is that closer ties might lead to better trade or better uh, access to these big BRICS economies. The percentages... Uh, that we showed you don't add up to this but considering purchase price parity last year the BRICS nations accounted for 32 and a half percent of the global economy in fact in terms of PPP the BRICS nations have surpassed G7 nations those are the big western economies in terms of share of global growth so are there economic benefits uh, to us, a very small economy, uh, being among these big players as part of the BRICS Group of Nations? Uh, we're now joined by Stavros Nikolaou, Senior Executive Director of the BRICS Business Council. Uh, great to have you with us, Stavros, as always. An economist spoke to, uh, that we spoke to yesterday said, we actually haven't gotten much out of being part of BRICS yet. Obviously, you believe there's potential to be part of this Business Council, but what is your response? response to that sentiment? Francis, uh, firstly, thanks very much for having me on your on your program again. It's much appreciated, as always. And uh, I think my most immediate response is that we've got to look at the here and now and also the future. So I think firstly, um, being part of, of BRICS gives us um, market access to what is a club that contains the second, the fifth, the eighth, and the eleventh largest economies in the world. So it's it's quite unique in that respect. I mean, it's a it's a five country club, but it contains um, the the three leading in the top ten economies. Uh, so I think from a from a market access and the size of the markets, I mean that presents an immediate opportunity, and it's an opportunity that I think has only partly worked for us. And and I say that because we we have seen, if I compare period 2017 to 2021, albeit that there was some impact because of COVID, about 18 months of impact there, um, our trade with BRICS grew at 44% over that period. So if, if you were to annualize it, you know, it's a growth of around 10, 10 to 12%. Um, if you annualized it, uh, of course, that's not the exact phasing of it, but nonetheless a growth. So that's on the positive side. I think on on the side that is concerning, but the concern can turn into an opportunity quite swiftly, is that we do run trade deficits with all four of the BRIC countries. Now, in some instances, there's been a narrowing of that trade deficit. And, you know, trade deficits, Francis, per se, are not problematic. What What is problematic, though, is... If you if you unpack the trade patterns and you drill down to what sort of products we are exporting and what we're importing in return, then we are are heavily we are top heavy in exporting raw materials and then importing back finished products. Um, so therein lies the opportunity to change a deficit into a, a positive export opportunity of value added products. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just hasten to add one other element to that. Uh, I'm, I'm making the statement around an export opportunity, knowing full well, of course, that we are facing uh, significant uh, headwinds, economic headwinds in our country. We know the challenges around energy and infrastructure, etc. But uh, I think there are those products which have been identified, um, which are relatively energy, um, 
it's less energy intensive that we can look to accelerate export growth on. So that's the here and now, the immediate. For the future, we've got to obviously work on the assumption that yeah. these these headwinds will either be fully or partly resolved. And then that opens us up to very significant global markets in future. In, in terms of trade and exports, I mean, the access that we have to the U.S. market in terms of a goer, the preferential access for some African countries is often lauded because we see a, a huge amount of those big car players in South Africa as a result. Is there any hope that we could get something like that, uh, preferential access to these big economies, especially as we try to move towards beneficiation, as you said? Francis, uh, I'm so pleased you've raised a go because I think the the point around South Africa, and particularly uh, we who are the council representing South African business, you know, we're all nominated by by the two apex business bodies of South Africa, BUSA and the Black Business Council. Uh, our posture and that of South African business is very much that we've got to align with where our best interests lie. And um, if I look at it, our best interests lie both in the East, the West and the South. Now I'm introducing the South because of the African continental free trade area. And now that, that is a free trade area that we are yet to capitalize on. It's brand new, of course, but it does present significant synergies and, and opportunities for our country and also in tandem and partnership with both the East and the West. Now, can we realize and a go a type of agreement into the future. Um, I think we've started seeing a, a semblance of that uh, as recently as a week ago. Now, obviously, our biggest trade deficit, as you would expect, within BRICS is with China. It's of the order of around $11 billion. That's an annualized number. And last week, there were a number of of inward buying missions to South Africa or participants in the inward buying mission and deals signed for the export of products futuristically into China from South African companies to the extent of $2 billion or, or 40 billion rand there or thereabouts. So these are the type of agreements that I think we need to as a business community. Um, we, we need to keep speaking to our government on so that they can facilitate more of these type of arrangements. Of course, the role of government is very clear, as is that of business. The government ought to be an enabler. It ought to leverage its good relations bilaterally and multilaterally to create that uh, that conducive enabling environment. And I think we saw some of that last week. Yeah. So long may it last, Francis, and may we have more and more of these type of inward buying missions. Yeah, let's hope for an, an announcement uh, soon. Uh, finally, Stavros, uh, just because of time, there is a business meeting this weekend that we'll discuss. I mean, what are the benefits of just bringing together business leaders from across these countries? I think there are three immediate benefits, and we don't have obviously time to unpack it in detail. But you know, number one is uh, th there's nothing like face-to-face -face interaction amongst business people to identify those opportunities. Now, this will be the first time in four years that BRICS meets face-to-face. -face. I think, secondly, it does give an opportunity in a structured way through various working groups, um, in including in a sector that I'm involved in, pharmaceuticals. Uh, to try and get a, an understanding of where the opportunities and synergies lie. So it gives you that opportunity. And then <clears throat> lastly, it, it does enable us to build uh, a, a, an investment case for South Africa. So putting our best foot forward next week is all about um, creating a positive investor image in the midst of many, many headwinds that we face. All right, uh, we appreciate your time ahead of that uh, summit next weekend. Stavros Nikolaos, Senior Executive Director of the BRICS Business Council.